If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. I was sitting right here at my desk in January of 2009, and I was so excited here in my real estate investing business because I'd been in the business already for six years. I started in 2003. In the first six years of my business, I was using the local bank to fund my deals. So it was January 2009. I called up my banker. My banker's name was Steve, and I had had this conversation with Steve many, many, many times. I called him up to let him know about two deals that I had under contract. Now, both of these single family houses that I had under contract to buy, they were worth to me over $100,000 in profit. So I called up Steve. We had a little chit chat like we've had many, many times. And I told Steve about these two deals. I told him where they were located, uh, the funding that was required for these two houses for me to purchase. And I was going to make over $100,000 on these two houses. When I finished telling Steve about the deals and when I wanted to close, Steve went quiet on me on the other end of the phone, which is never a good sign when your banker goes quiet. He cleared his throat and he says, Jay, I'm sorry to tell you, but we have closed and shut down your line of credit. I don't know if you've ever heard somebody say something to you. And when they said it, it was like your brain and you're saying to yourself, I can't believe what I'm hearing. I said, Steve, what do you mean? I have lost my line of credit and you've shut me down. I've never been late on payments up until that time. I had an 800 credit score and I've lost my line of credit. What's going on? He says, well, Jay, due to the financial crisis going on globally, and you may recall what was going on in 2007, 2008, and 2009, due to the global financial crisis, we are no longer loaning money out to real estate investors. That's exactly what Steve said to me. So I, you know, finished the conversation. I hung up the phone and I sat here at my desk for a moment thinking, what in the world am I going to do? While I was thinking about other options and alternatives to getting my deals funded, and I didn't want to lose over $100,000 on these two houses that I had under contract, one thought that came to my mind, and it was a big lesson that I want you to remember from my mistake, and that is the biggest uh, or the biggest challenge you can have. The most dangerous number in any business is the number one. Only having one contractor, if you're rehabbing houses, only having one relationship with a realtor, right? Well, I only had one relationship for funding and that was one banker and one bank. And when that was gone, no way to fund my deals. Well today, and I'll tell you, being cut off from the bank was the biggest blessing in disguise I'd ever had. Being cut off from the bank in January 2009 has been the biggest blessing and uh, to, to my business of anything that's ever happened. And how is that? Well, I'll tell you what happened. You know, another mantra that came to my mind when that happened uh, with my bank cutting me off, I remember and I thought to myself, you know what, Jay, it's impossible for you to fail unless you choose to quit. And quitting was not an option for me. So I said, who do I know that is a real estate investor that's doing very, very well? So I thought of my friend, Jeff, who lived in Greensboro, North Carolina at the time. Well, I picked up the phone. I called Jeff. And after we had our pleasantries, I told Jeff what had just happened to me with being cut off from the bank. Jeff said to me, he says, well, Jay, welcome to the club. I said, what club, Jeff? He said, welcome to the club of losing your line of credit at the bank. I just lost my line of credit last week. I said, Jeff, your bank cut you off too. He said, yes. I said, well, what are you doing now to fund your deals? And Jeff told me something I'd never heard before. He says, Jay, I am now using private money. 
And I said, what in the world is private money? I'd never heard of private money. I'd never heard of private lending. Well, Jeff told me all about it and what he was doing. And so I hung up the phone and I started studying private money. I learned that in this world of private money, a lot of it has to do with teaching other people, other individuals, what private money is and how they can earn high rates of return safely and securely by investing their investment capital and or their retirement funds with you, the real estate investor. So I studied it and I put together what I call my private lending program. My private lending program is what I teach other individuals, other you know human beings, what private money is and what private lending is and how they can make a lot of money. And in fact, in some cases, depending on the type of deal that we structure and the type of private money they have, how they can earn money unlimited per year tax free. So I started teaching people how to do that. And in less than uh, 90 days, I was able to attract and raise $2,150,000 in less than 90 days. And so again, it was the biggest blessing. So in this episode, I want to share with you the five steps, five easy steps that I put together uh, of attracting, raising private money. And I put it together back then in 2009 and I still use it today. But before I go over those steps, I want to be clear with you exactly what is private money? What are we talking about? And then I want to contrast private money with hard money. How is private money different from hard money? Because I'm not talking about hard money. I'm talking about private money. So let me define private money, at least in my world. The definition of private money is it is an individual who loans their investment capital, just their liquid funds, to you, the real estate investor, and or they may loan to you on your deals retirement funds by moving those funds to a self-directed IRA company. And I'll talk all about that. And then they loan this money to you. We give them a security. They actually get a mortgage or a deed of trust that secures their note. And so this private lender is doing business directly with you and your company, your LLC, your land trust, whatever entity that you're buying houses in or buying properties. By the way, private money is not only for single family house investments. It's also for commercial deals. I mean, you may be interested in investing in uh, apartments or, you know, duplexes, you know, small deals, big deals, whatever. It's all the same money. It's just a matter of how we structure the deal. So now that we have established that a private lender or private money is you doing business directly with an individual and them funding your deals, then let me go ahead now and contrast private money with hard money. So hard money is typically a broker of money. Hard money is typically loaned out by a brokerage that has gone out and raised private money from private lenders that we're talking about. And these private money lenders invest in the pro in the hard money lenders fund, right? So to get a deed of trust to secure their note when they're loaning money to me. But a hard money lender goes out and raises money from private lenders and then they loan that money out to real estate investors. They are a middle person. They're making money on money, right? So here are the big differences uh, between private money and hard money. First of all is the interest rate. Now, let me tell you, right now, the average private lender individual in the United States that's funding real estate deals is getting 8% in interest. And that's what I pay them, 8%. Okay. A hard money lender right now is anywhere from 12% to 16%, depending on the hard money lender you do. And now there's some exceptions to that. You know, there are some hard money lenders that only charge 10%, but then they have larger origination fees. So the first big difference is the interest rate. Private money interest rate is much, much lower than hard money interest rates. Secondly, is what's called origination fees. Well, an origination fee is a percentage. It's also called, called points. It's a percentage of the amount that you are borrowing. 
So let's say for easy calculation, you're borrowing $100,000 from a private lender. Well, if it's hard money, you're going to be paying on average four points, 4%. Four you got to bring $4,000 of your own money to the closing table just to borrow that money from the hard money lender before you start paying 12, 13, 14% interest, right? Well, in the world of private money, it's only 8%. So you've already got a much lower interest rate. And in the world of private money, there is no points, no origination fees. In all these years, I've never paid a private lender an origination fee or points when I am borrowing money. So first of all, the interest rate is much, much lower. Uh, there are no points in the world of private money. Now, the third big difference between private money and hard money is what's called extension fees. So, you know, the normal term or length of a note when you're borrowing hard money, the length of that note is going to be six months, maybe nine months. You might be able to get an extension to 12 months. Well, if you haven't cashed out in six or nine months with a hard money lender, then you have to pay an extension fee with your hard money lender, which on average is going to be about 2% or so. So hard money has extension fees. So now let's see where you are so far on a hard money uh, loan. If the interest rate is 14% um, and the um, points are 4%, you're already up to 18% in the world of hard money. And now 2% to extend the note, if you haven't cashed out, you're already up to 20% your first year of borrowing money on, you know, borrowing hard money. Well, listen, there's no points with private money. There's no extension fees. You're still at 8%. All right. Now the next great big difference between hard money and private money is how much money do you have to bring to the closing table out of your own pocket when you are purchasing a property? Well, in the world of hard money, they're only going to advance between 65 and 80% of the purchase price. Well, who's got to bring the rest of the money to the closing table when you buy? That's right. You do. You got to bring the other 20% of the purchase price. Well, guess what? In this world of private money, you don't ever have to bring any of your own money to the closing table. In fact, my favorite reason for using private money is you always get a big check when you are purchasing the property. I mean, who wants to get paid to buy properties and bring none of your own money to the closing table? That's right. You do. I always bring home a big check when I'm using private money. So the private lender is going to advance always more than I need to buy the property. Now, the reason that's going to work is because I'm buying properties at, you know, discounted prices, right? That's why the private lender is willing to loan more than I need to purchase the, uh, purchase the property. So big difference in interest rate, no points, uh, the amount that you're going to get advanced, uh, there's no extension fees. And another big difference between hard money and private money is your credit has got nothing to do with how much private money you can get. Your credit score doesn't matter. It's because these are collateral loans. And then in addition to that, your verification of income doesn't matter, right? And I'm telling you, it just puts you in control of your business by you being able to make the rules and not the hard money lender. That's another big difference. You see the hard money lender like banks, they make the rules as to how much money that uh, they will loan to you. They make the rules as to, as to what's the maximum loan to value. Well, in this world of private money, the private lender isn't making the rules. Uh, you are making the rules. In fact, you see, in this world of private money, there is no application process. You are already approved. Well, I promised you when we started out, I was going to share with you the five steps that I put together to raise $2,150,000 in less than 90 days when I was cut off from the banks. And here they are. The five steps I put together are number one, I made my list of potential private lenders from my own connections that I have relationships with. Uh, I looked at my cell phone. Who's in my cell phone? Who's on my email list? Who's in my social media, my Facebook friends, my LinkedIn, my Instagram. 
So I looked in all the social media, who I went to church with, and I put my list together as to who I was going to reach out to and teach them about private money. That was the first step. The second step was I had an opening conversation with them and told them about private money. Now, in episode number two of Raising Private Money, I'm going to be sharing with you exactly what I say to private lenders when I'm talking with them. Step number three is I put together a short little 16-minute audio called Stress-Free Investing, and that was a CD I put together that I handed out that taught people what private money is. And that CD and that recording would lead them back to me for step number four. And step number four is where I actually teach the potential private lender what my private lending program is and how they can earn such high rates of return safely and securely. And the fifth step is the verbal pledge. When I get through teaching them the program, which only takes about 20 minutes, they tell me how much they have to work with. They also tell me if they have retirement funds and I may need to introduce them to my self-directed IRA company representative to where they'll move those funds over to do business with them. So finally in this episode, I want to answer the question, how is it that I have raised millions and millions in private money and I've never asked anybody for money. And here is the secret. I put on my teacher hat. I put on my teacher hat and I teach people in my warm market that I have a relationship with what private money is, how my program works and how they can make high rates of return safely and securely. So if you are interested in getting all the private money that you could ever want and you want to get it like really, really fast and you want to learn what my private lending program is, well, I've got a free gift for you that you can download right now. I'm so excited. I just finished writing my new private money guide and it's called seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate business and help you build incredible wealth. You can download my private money guide for free at www.jayconner.com forward slash money guide. That's www.jayconner.com forward slash money guide. And that'll put you on the fast track to getting private money. Well, I'm so excited that you decided to join me here on the very first episode of Raising Private Money. As I said, in the next episode, I'll be sharing with you exactly what I say to private lenders and where to find them. I'm Jay Conner, the Private Money Authority, wishing you all the best. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jayconner.com slash moneyguide. That's J-C-O-N-N-E-R.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconnor.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.